Welcome to another episode of Game Time. We had two shout outs on the introduction for a reason. We are down to the quarterfinals of the state basketball tournament. So we are here with two different programs. Uh, the Manal Panthers, the boys and girls programs here, Sharon Max and Dan Gale. We're going to start with the girls and ladies first. What has this kind of year been for you and the Panthers and your first year in charge of the program? It's been a building year. Um, we kind of started from them getting to know me, me getting to know them. Um, they've worked really super hard to get to this point. I don't think we wasted any time, any day, any game or any practice time really. Uh, we've gotten better and that's kind of been our motto that getting better every day was super important and we're kind of reaping the benefits right now. I want to talk about your first round game against Tatum that was played here in the gym. You started slow, but then took the lead. This one went to overtime. You got the first bucket in the extra minutes and held on for the victory. What was going through your mind as a coach during that whole sequence? Uh, just making sure the girls rotated on defense, uh, blocked the front cutters, uh, boxed out, in which they did, and that's how they pulled off the game. Uh, Tatum, great team. Um, they brought a lot of energy. I think the whole gym was filled with energy. Our boys came and cheered us on. Um, it was just an amazing night. You won three state championships as a player at Kirtland Central. What can you share with the girls about what it takes to make a deep run in the postseason? Um, well, I keep telling them, like, I've been a coach on number one teams, um, a player, of course. Uh, it's just kind of just staying healthy, just taking care of themselves and just being positive, having positive thoughts through the, when they go to sleep at night um, about that they can do it. Um, they have to have believe all as one as a team to make this run. Your next run in the postseason is against Escalante. Tough competitor, how do you match up with them? I think we match up well. Um, they bring the same kind of energy we bring. Of course, they're number one in the state and they've been number one most of the season. Um, I'm looking for a battle. If we go out and compete, we're gonna give them um, a game, but Again, that's a big a deal to try to do with a number one. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck. You have your work cut out for you. Yes, we do. Another team that has their work cut out for them against Escalante as well, the boys team and head coach Dan Gale. What kind of year has this been for you and the Panthers? Um, it's been a real good year. It's, it's been really positive. Um, we've had you know guys from, from all over. Um, we've got quite a mix um, of abilities and experiences. Um, and I think everyone's just really pulled together at the right time and we've managed to stick it out and, and, and do what we had to do for the large part. You mentioned having guys from all over. By the nature of the school, both the girls and the boys team have an international flavor. Is the language barrier at, at a, a problem at all at any point? Uh, sometimes it's a problem, sometimes it's entertaining. Um, <laughs> Sometimes they enjoy uh, some of the things that I say or, you know, I'll say some stuff and I'm the one that's constantly repeating. There's no one understand English, English. So, uh, but no, it's, it's been fun. Sometimes it does get confusing, but I mean, we're, we're around each other so much and, and we talk a lot um, on the court, off the court, on our, you know, team app and all the rest of it. So, um, yeah, we're, we're good by now. Your first round game, also in this gym, uh, atmosphere was great, enthusiastic. Were you pleased with the way your team performed? Uh, largely, yes. Um, I think I think we played good for um, good chunks of it. There's always stuff to improve on. Uh, there's some things that we didn't do as well as I'd hoped. Um, and, you know, we're spending the next couple of days trying to right some of those wrongs and uh, just get better. How do you match up with Escalante, your next opponent? Um, they're a really good team, man. They, they run and gun so well. They've got, you know, some really good guards. Um, you know, we've got height. They've got some speed. So um, it's going to be really interesting. And I think it's going to be whatever team imposes their will the most uh, is going to come out the victor. And what's it like for not only the program, but the school for having both the boys and the girls having such such successful years and still advancing in the playoffs? Um, I, the the community has been great, man, um, from the head of the school all the way down through um, to our middle schoolers. You know, everyone's enjoying it, coming to the games. As you said, the, the atmosphere was electric uh, for both games, for the, for the girls and the boys. Um, the girls, when they're supporting the boys, they're just as rowdy as um, anyone in the state, I think. So um, 
I enjoy the atmosphere and one of the reasons why I love coaching because I love the game and seeing these guys have fun. I enjoy the boys enjoying playing and, and, and the atmosphere it brings. All right. Well, good luck against Escalante. Good luck against Escalante. We'll be back with more game time after this. The New Mexico Activities Association is excited to announce the NMAA 24-7 mobile app. Whether you're a student, coach, parent, or player, you can have the power of the NMAA right in the palm of your hand. Find scores and schedules, follow your favorite teams, receive special offers from NMAA sponsors, get state championship information, highlights, features, and much more. Download the free NMAA 24-7 mobile app in the App Store or Google Play. Get it now. Are you living the life of an athlete? The New Mexico Activities Association brings you Life of an Athlete, a resource for students, educators, and parents to understand the challenges students face. Athletes, did you know one night of drinking will negatively affect your athletic performance for two weeks? Or that athletes who drink and do drugs are twice as likely to get injured? Alcohol's effects can reduce a high school athlete's potential by as much as 20 to 30%. Are you living the life of an athlete? Log on to lifeofanathlete.com to find out today. Do you love sports? Do you want a front row seat for exciting high school sports action in New Mexico? If the answer is yes to either of those questions, then becoming an interscholastic sports official may be right for you. The New Mexico Officials Association is looking for individuals age 15 years or older to serve as officials in 10 different sports. No experience is necessary and training is provided. If you're interested, call 505-923-3110. That's 505-923-3110 or go to the website nmact.org and click on the Officials tab. Hi, I'm Alex Rael and welcome back to Game Time. We are down to the quarterfinals of the 2022 State Basketball Championships. We've already talked about Manal. Let's see how the rest of the brackets size up heading into the final week. Let's start with the girls in Class 1A. No upsets in the first round. Top seed Animus has a date with Tahajli. Melrose will meet up with Gateway Christian. Defending state champ Roy Mascaro is still in the hunt for a repeat. And Maxwell could be the Cinderella of this ball. Maxwell went several years without a program, but now they've reached the Elite Eight against second seed Fort Sumner House. I just told the girls, enjoy it, soak it all up. I mean, live it up and you'll remember it all the time. And then after the first win, I said, well, you guys are continue to make history and, and, you know, continue to dream. I tell them, dream big. And I said, you know, as quick as it could end, it could also continue, you know, so, you know, our goal is to keep playing. And, and so they're excited and they don't want to stop. So that's exciting. So do you feel like the Cinderella of the bracket? Uh, right now I told the girls, why not? You know, honestly, you know, it's great. I said, anything can happen. And, you know, I always use examples if there's upsets and then I tell them, you know, the old cliche, you know, seeding and record goes out the window once you get to the quarterfinals, you know, like, and I told him that the other night, and the first thing I said on Lock Crew, congratulations, you're in the Elite Eight. And I said, there's many teams I'd love to be here right now. Let's take a look at Class 2A. Rehoboth, Christian, and Penasco will meet for the second time this season. Penasco beat Rehoboth in the season opener. Mesa Vista was the only first round upset in this bunch. They'll take on Clayton next. Eunice will host Laguna Acoma. The Cardinals are on a 12 game win streak. We've had some good teams. We Several years ago, they, they made the state tournament several years in a row. It's kind of the same situation that we're in now. They were young to begin with and built throughout the time. Made the state championship one year. Uh, haven't won it. Um, <clears throat> and this, this group right here has the potential to do the same thing, hopefully sooner than later. In Class 3A, only one of the eight first round games was decided by less than 10 points. Top seed Robertson rolled into the quarterfinals to face Theroux. Navo Prep is still in the running for a three-peat. Their last meeting with Crown Point was a one-point loss. Socorro's won their last eight games. They'll meet up with Santa Fe Indian School. Hatch Valley pulled off a first round upset on the road at Dexter and now has a date with Tohatchi. You know, they were scheduled to come to our tournament, our Red and Green Invitational and just with COVID, um, you know, so we really haven't played, you know, all tournaments seem to become very localized, you know, so um, I've seen I've seen them on, on film and, you know, they're obviously very, very good. Uh, it, it would take a monumental effort for us to go up there and get a win, but we're excited to, you know, for the challenge. In Class 4A, top seed Kirtland Central will host Valencia. Kirtland beat Valencia back in January. 
Highland hits the road for a run at the Rams. Portalis and Highland have identical 21 and five records. You know, the biggest thing with Portalis is, is that they are so well coached. And they got some really good players down there. They, they, they run their stuff really well. Uh, we match up uh, even well. I think they, they have a bad matchup, of course, with Denise. Um, you, you can't simulate the speed that she has. Um, but we have good matchups. We've got some size. They have some size. Um, uh, I think Aaliyah is going to be, uh, Navaris is going to be uh, kind of X factor for us. She can just shoot the, the lights out. Uh, she had a tough game against uh, Pius because, of course, our third game. They know who she is. Uh, I don't know if uh, Fatalis will be as, uh, as uh, knowing uh, of what she likes to do. Uh, and hopefully that, that plays into our our hands because she can flat out shoot the ball. In the lower part of the bracket, Bernalillo will take on Taos, the team they beat back in December. Moriarty beat Goddard for the third time this season. Their prize is a quarterfinal matchup against defending state champ Gallup. We have practice on Saturday just with loud noise because um, it's going to be a new game on Tuesday. And so we, we were blaring the speakers. We had booing noises going. We had, you know, and we talked about that, you know, that that they're all, their game definitely against Goddard was their best all around team game. In class 5A, the top eight teams all advanced. Unbeaten defending state champ Volcano Vista has now won 39 straight games dating back to last season. The Hawks host Centennial. Las Cruces will make the trip to Farmington for a quarterfinal matchup against the Lady Scorps. Farmington beat Las Cruces once earlier this season. They're very quick. Um... And, you know, right now I think we're just a better shooting team than them. And, um, but, you know, speed's going to be there. Uh, executions are going to have to be there. And uh, we just got to play smart basketball. In the other half of the bracket, Oregon Mountain will travel to La Cueva and Carlsbad will face Hobbs for the fourth time this season. Hobbs won all three previous matchups. On to the boys. Top seed Magdalena continues to roll. They'll host Dora in the quarterfinals. The winner will get either Clovis Christian or Roy Mascaro. Reserve pulled off a two-point upset in the first round and will take on Messia Valley next. The number two seed, Elida, will try to reach the semis for the second year in a row. We're about six foot one and down, but we've got some shooters and we play hard defense. We, we just play really hard. In Class 2A, only two of the first round games were decided by single digits, and this bracket had no opening round upsets. Top seed Tula Rosa will take on Estancia in the quarters. Rehoboth Christian versus Jal is a rematch of last year's final. Hagerman will travel to Pecos for a matchup against the number two seed. Hagerman is 22 and 3 on the year. Have a countdown going, like how many games left? How many games do, you, do we have left? And we got to take it one game at a time and we kind of broke it down. All right, hey, Texaco was first quarter. Um, Beckles, let's make it second quarter and let's let's try to get all the way through to the fourth quarter, which would be the state championship. So hopefully we can we can play the way we know how and, and come out focused and determined and and good things will happen. In class three A, top seed Socorro will see Crown Point in the quarterfinals. Navo Prep will travel to St. Michael's. Sandia Prep will take on Santa Fe Indian School, who upset Raton in the first round. Sandia Prep's Mac Manzanares is playing great right now, averaging about 30 points a game over the past couple weeks. You know, I lost eight seniors from, the, from from last year, a team that, you know, we went to the state final two years in a row, so it was kind of new. I only had two guys that had played in the uh, of RC basketball, uh, Mac Monsonatis and Jackson. So it was a big learning curve. We played a tough schedule early. So, you know, took a lot of losses, under 500 most of the season until we got to district and slowly came around, slowly came around. And by district, we were, you know, playing better. All the guys that, you know, got some experience in varsity. And now uh, they're playing a lot of good basketball. We, we got a, only got one senior that plays a lot in Mac, uh, Monsonatis, who's really come, a, come on strong. He's averaging about 30 points a game in the last six. So kind of the team we have. We have size as we always do and we use our size as much as we can. The winner of that game will take on either Bosque or Robertson. The Bobcats knocked out defending state champ Hot Springs while Robertson rolled over Dexter in the opening round. They look like they're playing really well right now. Um, Gonzalez is fantastic athlete, not just a basketball player, but a fantastic athlete all around. Um, I think that's going to be a, a, a matchup for us. Um, I think our our guards are going to be up for the challenge of, of trying to slow him down a little bit. Uh, we're kind of fortunate in that area. They pretty much play a guard heavy uh, basketball team and we play a guard heavy basketball team. Um, so I think we're going to match up pretty good in that area. Um, 
again, I think, you know, you put my guards out on the basketball court, you put other people's guards out on the basketball court, I think we match up pretty well. Class 4A bracket looks like this. The Highland Hornets are looking for their first state title since 1972. They'll host Artesia, who punched their ticket to the quarters with a last-second shot by Jake Barrera to beat Lovington in the opening round. Probably one of the funnest groups I've coached JP as far as really focusing in on getting better and controlling what they can control and just doing what we ask them to do. And we're peaking at the right time. It can show, you know, we won four in a row now. Uh, was really sitting almost third in district and found a way to cause a playoff game and, and win a playoff game and then get the host dish championship. And then here we are, you know, moving on to this, the next round of state tournament. Rivals Academy and St. Pius square off in the quarters. The Sartans beat Academy in the first week of the season. In the other half of the bracket, defending state champ Del Norte pulled off an upset in the opening round and will now travel to Española Valley. Blinn takes a trip to Taos. The Eagles beat the Tigers back in December. Last but not least, Class 5A. Undefeated top seed Las Cruces had a 50-point win in the opening round. They host Sandia, who picked up a road victory at Santa Fe over the weekend. Patrisco Heritage will travel to Hobbs. There's not an environment in the state that's better than Hobbs High School. Um, I've been doing this long enough to know that that is a fact. Um, the unfortunate part to this is a five-hour trip with a group of boys that have never played at Hobbs High School. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, I'm giving them a history lesson on, on what Hobbs Eagles basketball is from, from Coach Tasker building that thing into the monster that it is today um, and all the tradition and, and expectation over there and, and the high basketball IQ of the, of the common fan that, that owns reserve seats. You know, the whole reserve seats is new to the Metro. Like I tell people and they freak out about that. Um, I, I warned the boys Saturday night after we won that let your parents know that they will not be able to sit in the lower level because those are reserve seats. They will sit up in the nosebleeds and they better get there early because there will be a line to get in. So um, from my perspective, it's not anything that I haven't been through, um, but our boys will really have to handle the environment on top of a terrific Hobbs Eagles basketball team. In the other half of the bracket, Los Lunas took out defending state champ Cleveland. The Tigers traveled to La Cueva and Carlsbad will be on the road for this second straight game this time against number two seed, Volcano Vista. Remember, the quarterfinals will be played at the home sites of the better seed. The semifinals and finals will be played at the Pitt, Rio Rancho Event Center, and Bernalillo High School. One of the top shots of the playoffs came just last weekend in Artesia. Jake Barrera hit a three-pointer with one second left to give Artesia the win over district rival Lovington and advance to the quarterfinals of the playoffs. With just a couple days left in the regular season, Here's a look at 10 of the best plays we've seen so far this year. Now, don't get me wrong, these aren't the only great plays, but 10 pretty good ones. Number 10, Eldorado's Bella Hines has some moves. Check out the freshman with a behind the back scoop to the hoop, that's nice. Number nine, Highlands Jose Murillo is dangerous on both ends of the floor. We could choose a variety of blocks or dunks, but this one against Cleveland shows both. First the block at one end and then the reward at the other. Murillo passed the 1,000 point mark for his career this season too. Number eight, La Cueva's Riley Ottman can handle the ball. Check out this ankle buster and baseline bucket at the Metro Tournament. Number seven, Albuquerque Academy and Valley tied at 48 until Will James puts an end to the game at the buzzer. Chargers with the game winner at the horn. Number six, speaking of buzzer beaters, Hope Christian and Sandia were on the court at the Rio Rancho tournament. Huskies down two, Jeff Wycott gets three before the buzzer sounds a walk-off win for Hope Christian. Number five, let's go long distance. Atrisco Heritage taking on La Cueva. Tony Pacheco with a half-court heave at the end of the quarter. Number four had some drama. Volcano Vista and La Cueva going down to the wire. Less than two ticks on the clock, and that's all Jaquan Hill would need for the game-winning three. Number three is a three-highlight montage from undefeated Las Cruces. First, Deuce Benjamin went down the lane and Hobbs and got up to put it down. Then, in another game, Deuce doing the dishes. Off the glass to Isaiah Carr, don't you very much. Finally, the piece de resistance under the leg alley-oop to Carr, who hammered it home. Two plays at number two from the same player, Clayton's Emerson Beeland against Pecos to beat the buzzer at the end of the first quarter, and then the same person, same game at the end of the first half. 
and we go real long distance for number one. Check out Jamie and Perez of Los Lunas before halftime against Santa Fe. Nailed it, heading to the locker room. Impressive. And good luck to all the teams still playing in the postseason. That's going to do it for this episode. We'll see you next time on Game Time.